Welcome back to another episode of our CMA USA series. Today, we are starting an important topic that affects the daily heartbeat of every business, working capital management. Let's begin by asking, what is working capital? Working capital is simply defined as current assets minus current liabilities. This formula shows us how much short-term liquidity a business has to cover its day-to-day -day operational expenses, things like paying suppliers, covering salaries, and maintaining inventory. Now let's go one step deeper and look at the balance sheet layout. On the assets side, we have current assets like cash, inventory, accounts receivable, etc. Non-current assets like property, machinery, and long-term investments. On the liabilities and equity side, we have current liabilities such as accounts payable, wages payable, and other short-term obligations non-current liabilities like long-term loans or bonds. Now imagine a scenario where a company's current assets exactly equal its current liabilities. In this case, the working capital is zero. This means the business has no extra short-term cushion. It's just barely managing to cover its short-term obligations. If any unexpected expense pops up, the company could easily fall into a liquidity problem. So what do we need? We need to maintain a positive working capital, which means current assets should be greater than current liabilities. But where should that extra working capital come from? Here's the key point. To increase working capital, businesses often rely on non-current liabilities, like long-term loans or other forms of long-term financing. Why? Because using long-term funds to support short-term needs gives the business breathing room. It allows you to run operations smoothly without stressing about immediate cash shortfalls. But remember, you should never rely on non-current assets like buildings or machinery to support day-to-day -day operations. These assets are not liquid. You can't just sell a machine quickly to pay your electricity bill or suppliers. That's why we don't use non-current assets to manage working capital. Instead, the healthy approach is to have a solid base of long-term capital, like equity and long-term debt, and use that to maintain a buffer of current assets over current liabilities. This is the core principle behind working capital management. To make sure the business always has enough short-term resources to keep running efficiently, even during uncertain times. Working capital management, or WCM, is not just about knowing your current assets and liabilities, it's about actively managing them to keep your business running smoothly every single day. So, what exactly is working capital management? Working capital management is a financial strategy that focuses on optimizing a company's short-term assets and short-term liabilities. The goal is to ensure two very important things. Efficient operations. This means making sure that the company has the right amount of inventory, pays suppliers on time, collects money from customers without delay, and doesn't let cash sit idle. Sufficient liquidity. This means always having enough cash or near-cash resources to meet short-term obligations. You don't want to be in a situation where you have to borrow emergency funds just to pay salaries or utility bills. Think of it this way. Working capital management is like making sure the company's financial engine is well-oiled and running every day. Not just today, but continuously. It deals with key decisions such as how much inventory to hold, how quickly to collect money from customers, when to pay vendors, how much cash should be kept in hand or in bank accounts. The primary objective is to strike a balance. You don't want to keep too much working capital because that means resources are tied up unnecessarily. At the same time, you can't afford to have too little or your daily operations might come to a halt. That's why working capital management is all about finding the sweet spot, where the business runs efficiently, meets all its obligations, and at the same time, uses its resources in the best possible way we're going to explore the different working capital policies and how companies manage their day-to-day -day financial needs through a balance of assets and liabilities. Working capital, as we already know, is the difference between current assets and current liabilities. It's what a company uses to fund its daily operations, like buying raw materials, paying salaries, and covering short-term expenses. But not all companies manage working capital in the same way. Their approach depends on the type of policy they follow, 
conservative, aggressive, or moderate. Let's start with the conservative policy, also known as the defensive policy. Under this approach, the company prefers to keep a higher level of current assets, like cash and inventory. The goal here is safety. Even if there's a sudden drop in sales or an unexpected expense, the company won't run into a liquidity crisis. The downside? When a company keeps too much cash or stock that isn't immediately needed, it sacrifices potential profits. Those funds could have been invested elsewhere to generate returns, but they remain idle for the sake of safety. Now moving to the aggressive policy, which takes the opposite approach. Here, the company tries to keep current assets as low as possible and may even use short-term loans to finance part of its long-term needs. This strategy can lead to higher profitability because there's less idle cash and more efficient use of resources. But the trade-off is higher risk. If something goes wrong, like a sudden spike in raw material prices or a delay in payments from customers, the company may not have enough liquidity to cover its short-term obligations. Some companies choose a moderate policy, which is a balanced path between the two extremes. In this case, the company keeps a reasonable level of current assets and carefully matches its financing sources, using long-term funds for permanent needs and short-term funds for temporary requirements. This allows the company to balance safety with profitability and avoid unnecessary risks. Next, let's understand the two types of working capital a company deals with, permanent and temporary working capital. Permanent working capital is the minimum amount of current assets a business needs at all times, regardless of the season or economic conditions. It's the base level of inventory, receivables, and cash that must always be available to keep the business running smoothly. On the other hand, temporary working capital is the additional amount required during certain times of the year, such as seasonal demand spikes or large one-time orders. This type of working capital goes up and down based on business activity, and it is usually financed using short-term borrowing or temporary credit arrangements. To give you a clearer picture, imagine a company that sells air conditioners. During the summer, it needs more inventory and more cash for marketing and operations. That extra working capital is temporary, but the regular inventory and fixed cash needs for running the office. That's permanent. So to sum up, companies need to choose the right policy based on their risk appetite and business nature. A conservative approach offers safety, an aggressive one pushes for profitability, and a moderate policy tries to strike the right balance. And at all times, they must manage both permanent and temporary working capital wisely to keep operations smooth and financially healthy. So far, we've understood what working capital is and the different policies companies follow to manage it. Now, let's take a step further and understand what exactly working capital management means in practical terms. In simple words, working capital management is all about managing the current assets and current liabilities of the business effectively. The goal is to ensure that the company has enough liquidity to meet its short-term obligations without keeping too much idle cash or stock that could reduce profitability. Now, to manage working capital efficiently, a company has to focus on a few key areas. These are the most important components of working capital management, and we'll be covering them one by one in our upcoming episodes. First is cash management. This is all about planning and controlling the cash inflows and outflows to make sure the business has enough cash to pay its bills on time. Cash is the most liquid asset, and managing it properly is absolutely critical for short-term survival. Next is marketable securities management. These are short-term investments that can be easily converted into cash when needed. Companies often invest their excess cash in these low-risk instruments to earn some return until the funds are required for operations. Then we have accounts receivable management. This involves managing the money that customers owe to the business. It includes setting credit policies, tracking due payments, and making sure that the company collects its receivables on time without hurting customer relationships. The next major area is inventory management. Here, the company must maintain the right amount of stock, not too much that it ties up cash unnecessarily, and not too little that it leads to stockouts and missed sales opportunities. It's all about balance. And finally, we'll cover short-term financing management. This includes planning and using short-term sources of finance, like trade credit, bank overdrafts, and short-term loans to meet temporary working capital needs. So these are the five major components we'll be exploring in detail in our upcoming episodes. 
Each of them plays a vital role in ensuring the business runs smoothly on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you so much for watching this introduction episode on working capital management. I hope you now have a clear understanding of what working capital means, why it's important, and how companies manage it through different strategies and policies. Before you move on, make sure to review your study material and try practicing some questions related to working capital. This will help reinforce your understanding and prepare you well for exam questions. In our next episode, we'll begin exploring each component of working capital management in detail, starting with cash management. Until then, keep learning, stay consistent, and take one step at a time on your journey toward mastering the CMA exam. See you in the next episode.